How are you, Luca? Do, do I need a truant stand? Uh, How much battery do I need on my laptop? Because I'm afraid it might die. <laughs> he looks like he... <laughs> in a cave. Sweet. Call. Yeah. And. I've got a right bag of tricks. If I stand under this window, I should get good internet. <laughs> I could just. I could. <laughs> Let me get my box. Sorry, I was all set up now, but I've got everything. I think Stiff hooked it up. What kind of wheel are you building, by the way? Uh. Have they sent you long nipples or short ones? It looks like that. Yeah, like that. Right then, a wheel build. Wow. So to build a wheel, you need uh, a spoke key. Oh, if you've got a spoke key that's a long one like that, that'd be perfect. Okay. If you've got a train stand as well, you need a train stand. I don't have a train stand. Okay, do you have a bike? Yeah. I have to do it on a bike then, that's all right. Best place to start is to pick up your spare wheel that you've got. This one? Yeah. So on a, on a front, we always start on the drive side spoke. So we're going to start on the spoke that's left of the valve hole. So if you, you want to get your rim, and if you can hold your rim flat, we're going to start on the drive side. So we're going to start on the offset side. So offset side up yeah like drive side up yeah okay and i always i always hold the rim with the valve hole like at 12 o'clock like away from you like that yeah, away from me got it and then you can usually kind of balance it on your legs and you need to get your hub i got a nice red one if the with the because the spoke beds offset it means that you can run the same length spokes on both sides so you want to get your hub and we're going to start on the drive side. Now the art for a really well-built wheel is to be able to look through the valve hole and see the logo. That's how I usually do it. Yeah, I thought so. So you're going to start by dropping a spoke, probably like the one next to the valve hole, down through the hub. The valve hole on the hub? The the one next to the logo, sorry, on the hub. On the disc side? On the drive side. We're going to start on the drive side. Oh, yeah, you said that. <laughs> okay. And then fold that over so it looks like this. And that's going to go, if you're holding the rim towards you, it's going to go to that uh, spoke to the left of the valve hole. The hole left of the valve hole. There it goes. And, and then whack a nipple on the end. How much? Uh, how much should I thread it on? Just a little bit. Yeah, don't go all the. Don't go on too much at the minute because it'll just make your life harder later on. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Only twenty-seven more to go. So now just make sure you've got the spoke, um, you've got the offset the right direction relative to that other wheel because you don't want to cock it up at this stage. So now you can get some spokes and you're going to go every other hole on the hub. It's easier to put the wheel like flat on your lap. If I can point it down. Every other hole on the hub. Yeah. And the spoke's going to go the same direction as that one before. So they're going to come up like that. And then you're going to fold them out. Which, uh, which, which hole do I put it through? Clockwise. So if you're going clockwise, from, from that hole, from the spoke that we've got in, you want to count four. So uh, you put it in the fourth one. Oof. So wow. sure, there, should be, there should be three. Correct. So the reason it's four is <clears throat> the number of spokes is divisible by four. So this is a 28 hole rim. 
to the essentially seven groups of four spokes. So a 32 hole rim has set, has, has seven groups of, has eight groups of four spokes. Tom, like that. Yep, spot on. And three, three, yeah, uh, three, three holes in between. Okay. So you're going to repeat that all the way around the hub, every other hole, every fourth hole on the rim. Uh, when I look through the the valve, am I supposed to see the logo? Yeah, but if you can't, <laughs> it won't affect the. I don't see it. <laughs> uh, huh. Is there any way of? Uh, can I show you, and you can tell me if it's right or not, or is it not really? Yeah, it looks right. So you're going to repeat that uh, seven times again. Um, so every other one on the hub. Yeah. And then to, to which one on the rim? So from the first one that you've put in, it's every fourth hole again. Ah, uh, got it. I have built a wheel before. Not many. I've done a few rim swaps. Those are pretty easy. Yeah. Rim swaps, the, uh, the speedy way. They were the best at times. They were the worst. <laughs> yeah, really. How you doing? Hey, how's it going? I'm good. I'm building a wheel. Oh boy. My <laughs> friends are teaching me. Uh -huh. My friend, come say hello. My friends are teaching me on the in the oh. on the computer here on the camera. Oh, I see. They're uh they're professional wheel builders. Okay. Hey. This is the neighbor. How you doing? Great. How's your ride? Not bad. I sure got blacker than hell now. I thought it was going to get wet. I said, I turned around and headed home. But... Yeah. Coffee service. Mm -hmm. ah. Hello there. Hi. Hi. How you doing? Good. How are you? That's good. Love Check you. it out. Big job on today. Yeah. Your eyes a lot. Did you say he was 83? Yeah. Pretty good going. Still be out riding your bike every day at 83. Yeah, he fucking literally rides every day. Awesome. All right, I think I've got it. How's she looking? They're all going the same direction. Yeah, looks good. Cool. So you should have seven, seven spokes left and seven holes left. Maybe they sent you a spare. So the, on the, the last spoke, you want to drop it through from the opposite side. So, so like the, out, the next spoke? Yeah, so it comes out vertically. So if you're holding it from the drive side, you'll be dropping them through the wheel. Gotcha. So then fold it over. And these ones, instead of going under, under, over, these ones go over, over, under. Got it. It doesn't quite reach it, though. Uh-oh. That means... Uh-oh. That I've tightened them all too much? No, it means that, the you know, the first spoke on this side, you've put it in too far away, maybe. Like, I could probably... I could reach, I could, well, no, it doesn't reach. <laughs> but uh, maybe is it because, like, some of the holes, like, some of the spokes are, like, poking through the rim too much, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Have a, you should, none of the, if you run your finger around, none of the nipples should be poking through the rim at all. Yeah, some of them are. Ah. Just so the, like, one, there might be one that's caught, like, sometimes the, the bit on the nipple catches, so you might need to flick it off. Oh, yeah. There you go. Sounds like it might reach now. Um, It's closer. <laughs> That's not the answer I was hoping for. <laughs> if I, like, try and rotate the hub, will it help? No, you won't be able to. Basically, if it won't reach, you've got to undo all the spokes on that side. It's pretty close. 
How close? Well, I mean, we can keep going and you'll soon, you'll know by in about four spokes time, you'll know whether it'll work or not. But see, like this spoke is sticking through. I can't get it to like go in, but it's like, see it? It's like that yeah, close. That's too, yeah, it's, that's too far away. Really? The, the best way to look at it is if you've got another wheel, you can look at the angle which the spoke comes. I don't know if you can see that, but can you see the angle which this spoke comes out the hub? relative to this one like it the first cross is like hidden by the hub flange almost mm, yeah i think i fucked it up <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty easy to cock up that first one so basically you need to mark where so if you've got it this side up you need to mark which one you're which hole you're in and you need to move one closer on the hub what's the best way to do that like take it all off and start over or Yes, yeah, so undo all the ones on the disc side and start over. It's easier to take them all out the hub and just, if you've got a Sharpie or something, you can mark the right hole while you've got it so you don't do it again wrong the second time. I'll undo mine as well because my uh, logo doesn't line up with my valve either and it's really upsetting me. Don't you have to redo the whole thing to do that then? Yeah. I'm not that upset. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I was too busy concentrating on your wheel. I'm only gonna blame it on you. It's always my fault. <laughs> How many wheels did you break last year, Luca? I honestly don't think I broke a single one. Apart from the one with your truck. Yeah, Tom, I think I got it good. Sweet. Is that all the spokes in now? Uh no. Have you still got the seven to do? Yeah, but they're like, the the seven that I just did are like all sitting in nice now. They weren't, before they were like poking out. Okay, yeah. You, you must have gone one hole too, too far, if you know what I mean. So for the last one, you want to go from the inside out, right? Yeah. Inside out, and then over, over, under. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, and it reaches like a dream. <laughs> My fingers are starting to hurt. Yeah. Last one's going in. Nice. Fuck yeah. We're done. Have you ever trued a wheel before? Yeah. Um, have you ever trued a wheel without a train stand before? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are we truing it too? You got to, you got to put you got to tape it and put a tire on. Oh yeah. So should I get the bike and flip it upside down right here? Yeah, maybe. All right. So should I just start tightening them? Tightening. You want to tighten every nipple until it's at the end of the thread. Where you can't see any thread. Yeah, so where the thread goes into the nipple, tighten it up, and then you know that every because you've built all new spokes, you know that every spoke is in the same place. So you should put the same amount of turns on each spoke, and it should basically be true. In theory. In theory. I've I've tightened them to the where I don't see any threads, but it's still like really really loose. Yeah, so you probably want to go around every one. Now, depending depending on how focused you are, there's two ways to bring the wheel up to tension. Um, if you want to bring it up nice and even, then you'd start on the first spoke not next to the valve hole, yeah. and you tighten every third spoke a full turn. And then by the time you've gone around the wheel three times, you've got you've got one turn on every spoke, and that brings the tension up nice and evenly. But you've got to concentrate. If you don't want to concentrate, you can go every spoke, sort of one after the other, and then what that does is it can bring the ten like it brings the tension up unevenly, so you can end up with up and down in the wheel. But it's a lot easier to deal with. Okay, I'll focus. We'll do it the easy way. 
shall we? Okay. <laughs> I'd probably do it the easy way. All right. So just each spoke a little bit. So every spoke, one turn. Does the wheel look like it's in the middle of the fork or is it offset to one side or the other? Uh, it's so loose that I can just push okay. it. So yeah, you might want to put you might want to put two turns on it actually. Yeah, it's definitely a dark art is wheel building. There's like men in sheds or caves like this who just build wheels and they're really, really good at it. I always thought that like oh a carbon rim is gonna feel really stiff no matter what you do. Because like coming from like I used to ride like DT Swiss like aluminum rims and then I went to carbon on the Envies and it was just like so stiff and I just thought that's how it was but then like now with like the Santa Cruz wheels I think you can really get this the carbon rim to feel more like an aluminum rim like if you know what you're doing with the spoke tension and stuff yeah and I think it makes a pretty big difference so uh yeah I think that's something I'd like to kind of think about more often going forward it's definitely a good way of adding grip, uh, claim of spoke tension. With the reserves, is they're so much more compliant because there's four less spokes, because the 28 hole. <clears throat> How are you looking there, Luca? Pretty good. Pretty tight? Yeah? Not quite tight yet, but... I'd put another turn on then. Um, you want to, you don't want to, you want to bring it up to attention quite slowly anyway. Yeah. So just a turn at a time is grand. And then once, once it's starting to look tight, you need to kind of make sure it's in the middle. And then we need to pre-stress it before you stress it. Yeah, this is looking good. Is it in the middle? Yeah. Mine didn't. Look at that. Are you sure it's in the middle? Yeah. Sweet. Should I do another turn? Yeah. How tight are they? Like. Uh, it's getting there, actually. Are you are you squeezing parallel spokes rather than spokes that are next to each other? Uh, like like uh these guys. Yeah, 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 that's it. Yeah, don't squeeze the two that are like crossing each other. Yeah. yeah whack another turn on it then if it's starting to feel good. If you if you want to check it for true, you can uh, put a cable tie on your fork leg. Yeah. Then uh, cut it down. I was going to do that. I'll do another turn and then I'll do that. We're we're feeling pretty good over here. <clears throat> is it starting to come up to tension? Yeah. What you want to do is you want to whip, take it out the um, take it out the bike, and then if you kind of put it in your midriff here. You can kind of use your uh, elbows to, and you'll hear the spokes ping as you get the twists out. I don't know if you can hear that. How do you do it? By basically pushing down with my elbows and pulling the rim towards me, and you can hear the spokes ping. It takes the twists out. The other option is to put it on the floor and stand on it. I'm not going to break it, am I? No. Nah, you'll get a bit of flex out of it. Yeah, it flexes a lot. Yeah, but that's why it rides nice. I guess you haven't got a dishing tool, have you? No. Have you got any string? You can do it with string, but it's pretty hard. Do it then. Uh, I don't have anything. <laughs> I might have some rope. I put a, a zip tie on both sides? Uh, I'd work off one side and then cut that one off and work off the other side. You can try it on both sides, but it'll probably just confuse you. So with the spoke tension, you need to do it slightly tighter than the rear wheel because when you put a tire on, the tension drops. Pretty true. Is it? Have you got a bit of up and down in it? It looks like you've got a bit of up and down in it. Yeah, just a little bit. It 
probably tighter than the back. Yeah, it wants to be a little bit tighter than the back because when you put a tire on, the pressure yeah. goes. The pressure of the tire reduces the spoke tension by about ten percent. It's pretty pretty tight. Sweet. Have you have you tried stressing it again? Uh, no. It's definitely worth stressing it to get all the twists out now, otherwise it will go out of true once you ride it. If you can't get it to if you can't get it to make the noise like that, then just um put it on the floor or put it on something like this and just uh, push down on it. You can usually hear it. I don't know if the mic can pick it up. Rim tape? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I might go pee real quick. Then then rim tape. Pee then tape. That was, uh, he's better at it than I thought he would be. He's going to be out of a job. Did they send you colour match valves? I've got red valves. You'll need a pair of scissors or something to cut the tape with. Oh, yeah. And an implement to uh, puncture the tape to put the valves through. Just one go around or two? Yeah, I just put one on. If I if I put two, I would um, start at the valve across, like just after the valve, go around it once, and then do the second lap opposite it to start from the black sticker on the wheel, rather than going round twice. I would do two one laps because then if you damage it, you can just take one off rather than both. Yeah. All right. So where should I start? <laughs> so you, you want to start just just past the valve. And past then, the valve. yeah, so you want to go over the valve with the first bit and then it's doubled up over the valve. So wouldn't that be just before the valve? It depends which way you're looking, doesn't it? Yeah. True. <laughs> over the valve. If you want it to sit in the bottom of the rim, you want to pull it tight and wiggle it and then it sits into the bottom. Good concentration face. Steve makes the best tape. I only use PVC. And if you cut it at an angle, it's easier. How come? I don't know, it just sits in the rim better. I usually cut the stick the cut end down with super glue as well. Perfect. Be careful because if you if you split the tape lengthways, you have to retape it. One thing I love about Petey's tape is it's clear. So you can see the valve. Good thing. Good thinking, Petey. Not just a pretty face. <laughs> right, good. If you look through the valve hole, can you see the logo? You don't see mine. <laughs> All right, should I put a tire on? You a whole pack of this? Yeah. Squirt it in. And I usually put 100 mil in. I know a lot of people put less in, but the volume of a 29 tyre is quite a lot. The volume of a 27.5 tyre, which is the last time it was cal I calculated oh, it, going straight up. was like seven litres. Oh. Nice pump. It'd be so good if it exploded in this video. <laughs> <laughs> we all blows up. <laughs> I hope you've lined up your uh, Maxis with your valve line. A little off, but it's close enough. Close enough. That was way too easy. It's the tire that's got a wobble in it, not the rim. <laughs> <laughs> You're learning.